So we're gonna do a mic check. Y'all know what a mic check is? I know what a mic check is? Okay. But my version of a mic check is a little different. So don't look at me like you know what a mic check is. Oh, actually, you're supporters of a social life protection. So you know what my <laughs> you look at. Ready? I'm gonna go first, then uh, Gita will go, then Frankie will go. One, two, three, go. <laughs> Microphone check one, microphone check two, three, two, three, go. Microphone check one. Why aren't you dancing? Why I gotta dance? Two, I'm doing it my three, way. Go! Microphone check. She's good. Can you do the mic check? This is important. Mic check. Lord Jesus. All right. <laughs> Hello, everyone. This is Janet Cape with the Social Light Production, where we are what? Connecting the world through what? Through what? They don't know. They don't know the mission. But we are connecting the world through faith, culture, and what? Oh my God. This is so embarrassing. My own sisters. They don't even know my slogan. Anyway, social life production. We are connecting the world through faith, culture, and entertainment. Happy almost new year. This is a conversation to wrap up the year. And as you can see, it may be an interesting one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here with my older sister and my sister cousin. Call her my sister cousin because that's what she is. It's a new category. It's not just cousin, but it's sister cousin. But I am really, 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 really excited for the conversation today because one, you usually don't see these two, right? They chill. They're in the background. They come up front when they need to, right? But they are filled with just so much real talk, so much faith, so much wisdom, me who's sitting here, they are a big reason, a big um, supporter of just my development of whatever I do. So I'm excited to introduce them to you today. Before we start, I feel the need for us to say a prayer because this conversation, although, you know, it's going to be entertaining and enjoyable, but it's, it's purpose behind this, right? Um, and this is a, a, a divine appointment. So we just want to cover the atmosphere, those who, who are watching as well, and then we'll get started. Um, Wilma, do you want to? Start? Okay. Okay. So, Father God, we just always want to approach you with a thank you, God. Yes, God. We are at the end of this year, 2023. Yes, God. And as I reflect on 2023, all I can say is thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Sometimes we get so busy with everything that we forget to just say thank, thank you, you for your grace mm. and your mercy that we don't even deserve. Mm. Who are we for you to be mindful of, but mm. you are. And God, we just thank you for this conversation. There's people that this conversation is meant for. And so God, I pray that you speak clearly through us for them. Yes, this God. is not about us, it's about you. So I pray that everything that says brings you glory. Mm. I thank you for this platform. I thank you for entrusting Janet with this platform. Mm. And we get to partner with her today. <clears throat> So, God, I just give it all to you. Holy Spirit, have your way. Yes, we love you. We adore you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you for that prayer. Um, and just to tee up what we're going to be speaking about, and then I will introduce my sisters. So, earlier in the year, God gave me faith talk, like the theme about faith, and just to talk about faith, what it means, and not the pretty, dressed up, you know, standard messages that you hear about faith, but real faith talk, what you don't hear, what people may even find offensive, but everybody's faith story is different. Mm -hmm. So we're going to end the year with faith talk. Overarching, the theme is reflections, right? Because we're going to reflect, but we're going to reflect on faith. But like I said, these are my sisters, sister, cousin. I'm going to start with Miss Wilma or Gita. Please introduce yourself. Tell the people who you are. Okay, my name is Gito Wilma Parker. Gito means God's gift. It's not ghetto, it's Gito. Gito. Okay, Parker. <laughs> and um, I'm married, been married by 18 years, have three wonderful boys, and that's a little bit about me. All right. And Miss Frankie, Frankie with a Y. Frankie with a Y, Frankie <laughs> Letitia Riley. Um, and I've been married for 17 years. Um, and I have a Fur baby. <laughs> Thank you. And what's his name? Draco. Yeah. He's such a diva. Eight pounds of 
joy. Sweetness. Yeah. <laughs> I know divas usually refer to as women, but he, he's a diva. <laughs> he's Snob a little bit of a diva. diva. Yeah. <laughs> but very pretty. But anyway, and I didn't introduce myself. For those who are new to the platform, my name is Janet Kappa. Um, I've been single for 42 years. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a fur baby or any kids, but... I have passion. I'm not trying to be all deep because I know they may roll their eyes, but I'm birth. I've given birth to so much passion, so much vision. Yeah. This platform is my biggest baby, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm just so excited to see what God is doing, what He has done. I'm a connector. This platform is to connect mindsets, perspectives, faith, but it's on a real perspective. It's on an authentic perspective. So while I do have my little notes here that I usually follow, I feel like this conversation is going to be extremely candid so a couple of weeks ago um my sisters and my other sister and, and, and another cousin we went out to dinner literally we were out for five hours yeah just talking and so the significance of a dining room a dinner table i wish we had some food and we're at um, frankie's house and she didn't she don't have food for us but it's okay hopefully there's something in the oven for us to eat after mm. Mm. It, I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> Is there, I think she's going to surprise us. I saw some cake, so it's dessert, so that means there's food. So I'm excited. We're going to wait. We're going to eat. Anyway, well, no, we're at the dinner table. So the way this conversation is going to go is not going to be a structured flow. Yes, I'm going to ask questions, but they're going to also ask questions. We're just going to talk. So we are inviting you guys into our private conversation about faith. I'm going to kind of guide it because it's going to be, you know, specific questions, but overall, we're just going to vibe. So, ladies, are y'all ready? Ready. Sure. Let's All right. Do it. Real quick, you did not introduce your platform. Yes. Yeah. I name. also have a YouTube channel called Kingdom Huddle. It's not just based on YouTube, but that's one of the platforms that I do do it on. Um, but I feel like this new year coming up, God is going to expand that. But Kingdom Huddle will start recording again in January for mm -hmm. those that keep asking me. It's not that I've forgotten, but life has been happening. Yes. But, um, yes. but definitely, and, I, and I'm the one that I want to fo follow the prompting of God, not Absolutely. just do stuff that I feel like is a good idea. So yeah. look out for that. No, that's, that's, that's definitely important. And that's something that I always like to say in reference to social life production. It's a platform, but it's a ministry. And it's not to produce content for likes and for popularity. It's to produce content for purpose. There you go. Right? And so today we're going to start off by, and I'm going to ask, you know, a standard question that people you know, usually ask at the end of, of the year. This has been a year. Like, this has been a year. And that's filled with so much. Yeah. But first, let's start off by grading your year. What would you grade? And either one of you can go first. From A to F. Preferably it's not F, but if it is, that's your grade. <clears throat> so you can go from A, A minus, you know, B plus, all of that. But how would you grade your year? And before you go there, let me add a little bit more context. We're not grading it from the standpoint of what you accomplished, what happened, um, uh, you know, like tangible things. It's holistic. Yeah, tangible, but more so mentally. How did you handle the year? Frankie, you want to talk? Hmm. For some reason, this has been maybe uh, it's a really good question. Mm -hmm. It's been, I would say, C plus B minus. Okay, okay. kind of that's fair. Yeah, even for, and I don't know why yet because that's a great question and mm -hmm. I haven't thought about that. But it hadn't been horrible, but it had been like great. Okay, yeah. We so, can go. We can go more into yeah. it, and we can stop yeah. there. But okay, unless you want to go more no, into it now. No. Okay. B B minus C plus. But if you're going to pick one, because this is not a scale, you know, pick one or the other. We'll come back. We'll yeah. come back to maybe you. C. C. Yeah. C plus. average. You just said pick one. C average. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I think <clears throat> my year shifted for me yesterday, mm. so I would say that it's an A for me. Mm. Mm. And here's why, because of one word, word I feel wholeness. Oh, wow. That's good. Um, yeah. I'll that's good. Like that. Okay. I, yeah. I feel whole. Mm. You know, it's like, um, just quickly to touch on it, where, um, in, not to get biblical on anybody, but in the Bible, when the three, le 10 lepers were healed, <clears throat> they were healed, but one came back and thanked God and he became whole instead mm. of he was whole. So I feel whole. 
Yeah, we definitely mm-hmm. gonna get into that. Mm-hmm. We definitely gonna get into that. Um, for me, and I brought this question up because I had dinner with two of my younger cousins um, last night, which is so beautiful to see because I remember when I was 29 and 33. Yeah. Like, it was just interesting. And to see where they are from a, a faith and perspective standpoint, it makes me proud. Um, shout out to Vanessa and Sianna. Yes, I'm calling y'all out. Because when you speak about iron sharpen iron, you can be a mentor for the younger generation, but they can also be a mentor for Absolutely. you. That's and right. I think that's something the older generation needs to hear more of. But we're going to get into that as well. But what I told them, you know, after we went around um, with the grade, I, I had to think about it too, Frankie. And I had an unfair advantage because I had time to think about it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I graded myself with, a, um, I think it was a B plus. At first, I was going to say B minus. Um... But it was a B plus. And there's so much packed into that. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, we'll stop there. So the grades that we have is going to be kind of the foundation of the conversation and as it relates to the faith perspective, faith talk. And here's the thing. When we start, when we start talking, your grade may change, right? Because I put you on the spot. But as you really start to think about the year and your perspective and how you've handled everything, you may be like, wait, hmm. Maybe I'll give myself a, a, a C plus, right? I'm not telling you to change anything, but mm-hmm, right. it's a good way to, to retrospect. Okay, so a quick recap. So Frankie's grade for the year is a C plus, I am a B plus, and Gito is an A, which recently shifted. And so given um, the grades, um, I know we did introductions, but I feel like they need to go a little bit deeper into who they are, and then we can kind of flow into it, right? If you hear barking, that's Frankie's fur baby. Just ignore him. He's protecting the house. He's security. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's start with um, Gito. Like, talk a little bit about who you are from a faith perspective. Because this is faith talk, right? Right. So who is, who is Gito? I am somebody who chooses to believe God right away. So that's translation obedience i'm somebody that believes in walking in obedience for me um faith is something that's been easy for me i would say easier for certain people because um one thing that i've had since i was a little girl was having an intimate relationship with god being intimate with god is not something that i struggle with i was always the one that struggled with intimacy with other people Mm -hmm. you know so that's just a little bit about me Um, I am somebody who, like I said, obedience is what I want to live by and be known by Mm -hmm. is being obedient to God. Got you. Mm -hmm. Frankie, how are you as far as a a faith perspective? Um, Faith is a little different for me. Um, And it's, it's been growing and getting deeper throughout the years and maybe changing what I thought faith was Mm -hmm. and just going back and um, erasing everything that I thought I knew about faith and just embracing my relationship with my Jesus Mm -hmm. and how we connect and how we, how we talk and, Mm -hmm. and how my faith, um, how my faith lives in me the way that he just, I cannot explain it. Yeah, Yeah. How he put it in me. And yeah, it's very personal. Yeah, it's very personal. So yeah, things have changed throughout the years um, as far as faith Mm -hmm. and what I thought I knew about it. Yeah, yeah. For me, and like what Frankie said, it's erasing. Like it's unlearning and relearning. Now you're not erasing. It's kind of like if you're drawing, you're not erasing the entire picture, just the part that's messy or doesn't belong, right? Mm -hmm. So we've had a good foundation of faith, the basics of what faith is, right? Um, but there's a lot of other part of faith where it's still faith, but it was tainted a little bit. Um, and I'm, I'm now I'm going into to myself tainted with uh, religious beliefs, traditions, opinions, feel good, want to be comfortable. You know, name it and claim it is yours. It's about me. You know, not knowing my purpose, vision, not realizing my fulfillment is tied to 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 faith, to a relationship, relationship. not to things. Mm-hmm. Because it doesn't matter what we get, if you're not right within, faith is being is internal, right? Mm-hmm. You you can't enjoy the blessings, and you yeah. can't you can't you know it's yeah. not sustainable. It, it's not. So yeah, yeah. I kind of want to stay there a little bit and talk a little bit about that because I, to, today I don't know what I was watching. I think 
maybe it was yesterday, but someone got married or had kids or just literally half the world, right? Mm -hmm. But it's like, really like what the word says. Um, wait, what does the word say? What profits a man to gain the um, whole wide world and lose, lose their soul, soul right? Yeah. Now, I'm not coming for anyone in particular or saying because you have riches, you're not a Christian, or you're not a person of faith. But for me, I, I thought about that scripture because it's kind of like, well, what benefit is it if you don't feel fulfilled? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. I use an example of somebody literally can have everything but yet have nothing. There's a lot of people living like that. Yeah. That's why suicide rates are always mm -hmm. up. That's why people are just, you know, totally miserable because they don't have that inside. They don't have that relationship. It's not... They don't. They feel like there's nothing tether them, tethering them here, mm -hmm. um, and they feel like that is the last resort, or that's mm -hmm. the only resort, or <laughs> depression, or mm -hmm. whatever else may be. So, mm -hmm. yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think um, total peace really starts from within. Mm -hmm. yes. So you can always add all these other things on top of it, but at the end of the day, it's not going to bring you peace if you yourself is Absolutely not peaceful. Not. It's not. Yeah, because I remember. Um, this lady I was talking to and I was like, you are so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then she was strikingly mm -hmm. beautiful. And she was just like, she felt like she wasn't attractive. Mm -hmm. How is that possible? Those two don't go together when the whole world claims that you're beautiful. Right. And you're just like, nah, I'm all right. Really? Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. You know, so it, it, it comes from within. If yeah. it's not there, you can try to fake it until With you everything. make it. But it, eventually it's going to expose itself. So. I don't know who came up with that fake it till you make it stuff. Mm -mm. We ain't faking nothing no more. <laughs> it's just too much. It's too much. It, it, it's too much. The, yeah. the fake it, and I know what you, you're, you know, using it as an example for that. But mm -hmm. um, a lot of us, a lot of people, a lot of us, we have or we do fake it until we make it because that's the the mindset of grinding. Just go. You're tired. You're this and that. And just keep going. And that's that's fine. In some cases, God will lead you that way. Mm -hmm. But I'm not faking it till I make it. We're going we, we gonna to be real. I think the problem is that people fake it and just continue faking it. They never get to the make it. Yeah, okay. Because sometimes yeah, you have good. to talk to yourself. Be like, all right. We about, I know I'm, I'm, I'm feeling kind of down right now. I'm feeling kind of weak. I'm tired. I'm whatever it is that you, you know, are. So, Lord, you're going to have to help me. So, you know, let's, you know. This is the day that the Lord has made. Mm -hmm. I will rejoice and I will be glad in it. And then as you go, just speaking for me, sometimes I get up and I'm like, oh. And as I go through the day, I fake it. But I, it's, the, it's the making it that people don't actually mean. You're getting to my point. You're not faking it. You're having, literally, you're having a conversation with God. Yes. And so, I, like, you're, you're coming, well, I, just from what I see, you're asking to be filled up. I ain't got it. And I don't feel like faking it, but I'm going to say this scripture. God, fill me up in some way. It's like you're, you're relying on the source to fill you up, to help you to fake it. But you're not faking it. You're walking in a different light. I, I feel like we're, we're like, no. sometimes I feel like I don't have it. <laughs> like, no, I, actually, I actually am faking it. Got but, you, what got I you. Am, but, but what always happens is after I really, but the thing is, all right, so you can fake it and then you have to try to work to the to make it, it. so yes. it's no longer fake. Yes, it. you have to work. So I read the scripture. So, so I'm this, the scripture. Right. Right. I'm gonna you. read it, and, and I learned that a lot when I went through therapy after um uh, my mom passed, and she's and I was like, I don't want to hear what, and I'm not trying to go there again. I don't want to hear not one gospel song. Miss me. I don't want to hear not one Miss scripture. Me. But she was like, just play it. Just have it going. Even if you even if you side eye it right. and lip twist it, just right. have it on. Right. And just having that and having that mm -hmm. always underlying. And finally I started listening back again. Mm -hmm. Finally started penetrating back mm -hmm. again. So that's what I'm saying. You can fake you. it, but you, you have to get to the make it. Because you. if you continue faking it, that's gonna yeah. wear on you and it's gonna it's it's not gonna be good. No, that that makes sense. That yeah, makes I think I think though, like Outside of what you're saying, a lot of people think that there is where joy is, mm -hmm. but they keep moving the goalposts. Yeah, so, so they never make so it. They never satisfy. They never make right. it. So they never make it. <laughs> like, oh yeah, I want to achieve this. Once they achieve, like, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't feel different. Right. So right. Now, like, let's make a new goalpost. Right. So they're never satisfied. So right. that's where that 
fake it until you make it, but you feel like you feel empty inside. Mm, right. inside. Well, I'm talking about internal. I'm not yeah. talking about physical yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. goals. You know what I'm saying? Internal. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's multifaceted. Yeah. Yeah. Multi yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely good perspective on the fake it till you make it. And I, I, I guess my mindset is just going to people who just be faking it, right? Mm -hmm. Like, just faking it. It's not even dealing with faith, nothing. They're just faking it. Um, but there is another perspective as it relates to the fake it till you make it. Mm -hmm. It's faith it till you make it. And since this is faith talk, the faith it till you make it sometimes can make you feel like you're faking it till you make it. So maybe that's where all, all of that came about. But mm -hmm. even in that saying, there's different perspectives because if you're faith in it, then that means you're believing. No? Yes. Um... Like, you're, you're, you're not... Like, for instance, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Y'all know that's my favorite scripture. I say that very often. I don't necessarily think that in some cases, but I believe it because that's what God told me. So while I'm still trying to get to the make it, I'm believing, well, I don't necessarily think I can, but he says I can, so... If I believe, then the more I believe, then I start having that confidence that I can, even though... Well, I think what you're saying is your confidence lies in who told you, okay. not in who you are. Because whenever we look at ourselves, That's we're good. never adequate <laughs> enough to do mm -hmm. what God's calling us no, to do. No. Never adequate enough to do it. But when we take our eyes off of him, and that's what faith is. Gotcha. Faith is believing what Jesus said. And that he can do what he said he can, can Got do. Got you. And I just happen to be that vessel that he wants to do it through me. Which can be scary. Which can be real scary. God, mm -hmm. you want me to go do what? Uh, you, you, you know who I am. You know I'm shy, right? You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So mm -hmm. those are, that's faith talk with mm -hmm. God, but you're still moving. Right. No, that's, still good. Operating. that's good. So, yeah. That's good. I think you have a deeper perspective to add. No? No. That was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, that was good. That okay. Was good. So, and I didn't mean to get so deep, like, we just came out the blocks running, right? Yeah. I wanted to kind of, but, you know, we, we going with, with his flow, how, 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 however he wants this conversation to go. Because while this is a recap for the, the year, right, the end of the year message, if you will, this is faith talk. This is reflections. And as we're talking, I would love for you guys to think, take notes, you know, because this is your opportunity to reflect, to see how your life aligns or not, and why, right? And what grade would you give yourself, right? Have them. Oh, yeah, thank you. Thanks. See, that's what I'm saying. We, this is a, a conversation. Mm -hmm. What grade will you give yourself? Honest grade. Honest. And at first, I did from a scale of one to 10 with my cousins, but I said, no, it's something about the A through the F. It, it lands different. So think about your grade for the year. Thank you for that, because we've given ourselves grades. I don't even right. think to, to tell them to do the same. Uh, one thing about this conversation as I was reflecting coming, like just what are we going to talk about that's not so surface? Uh, the, the reason why this end of year conversation is faith talk because as you go through each year, what do people have? New Year's resolutions, right. goals. New Year's what, lives, yeah. New Year's what? <laughs> <There's a lot. laughs> right, right. So whether you're a Christian or not, and I don't believe we said what, what who and what we believe in, uh, we are Christians. So we have a relationship. For me, it's relationship, not religion. I know it's a religion. I don't even talk about the religion. It is relationship. Mm -hmm. Relationship. And so we believe in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is also God, part of the Holy Trinity. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody else want to add anything, but I don't want to get too deep. But that's who we and what we believe in. So when we're talking, that's the foundation we're talking from, right? Mm -hmm. But as I was thinking, I was like, well, you know what? Regardless if you're a believer or not, you still have to have some kind of faith to believe that you can do whatever it is that you, you, you're doing, right? Right. And so with Faith Talk, as we've gone through this year, uh, as it relates to the faith perspective, the mindset, your experience, and I know you graded yourself an A, you graded yourself a, a, a C plus, I'm a B plus, start with Wilma, that faith perspective of your year, you said it shifted. What, what made it shift? Actually, what made it shift yesterday was um, on my way to work. I'm in, in insurance as well. So on my way to work, it's about an hour drive. My car has become my prayer closet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, listening to a, a sermon, well, it wasn't a sermon, it's more like a teaching. Mm -hmm. And I started praying 
as soon as I got in the parking lot, I parked and I started praying. And when I started praying, I started speaking in what they call tongues. I started what? speaking in a language that I've never spoken in before. It wasn't in the church building. Right. It was me and God. Mm-hmm. And it was an encounter. It was an encounter wow. that after, like, I had to literally try to calm myself down mm. to be able to walk in the building. And even when I walked in the building, fortunately, nobody was there. I was still walking around speaking. Wow. I was still walking around. I was just, like, pacing. I couldn't get myself contained. And I knew it wasn't me. Mm-hmm. It wasn't me. It wasn't something I was trying to do. Mm-hmm. So that's why I said it was just like I felt like it shifted for me because it was a real encounter and not just that moment, but it felt like just little things leading up to Mm. yesterday Mm. was God confirming that I hear you. Mm. I see you. I'm pleased with you. And it was just like a preparation for the next, whatever that next is. Honestly, it wasn't me trying to plan for it. It was God. Mm -hmm. And that's why we talk about faith. Faith is something that sometimes is unexplainable. It's personal. Mm -hmm. You know, so nobody can tell me that I didn't have that encounter because I had that encounter yesterday. And so to me, that shifted so much internally Mm -hmm. inside of me that it shifted also my perspective about certain things Mm -hmm. because I've been diligently seeking him for this whole month. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I feel like he was just like, boom. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that just yeah. like, okay, Changed thank you, God. Not that's saying good. that that's a requirement to be in right. faith with no. God. Because the all gifts. these years, I'm 44 years old, going on 45. All these years, I've never done it. So um, so don't think that, that I'm saying that is a requirement. But that was a gift that God gave me yesterday. So, so yeah, for, for those who don't, don't know, it's, it's one of the spiritual gifts, mm-hmm. right? And God gifts you with a gift depending upon the season, the need, the level, elevation. It could be discernment. It can be, you know, whatever it is. But in reference to you speaking in tongues, it's you're edifying, like... Myself. Yeah, yourself. <laughs> but you don't know what you were I don't know what saying. I was saying, but I was. it's just I was praying, and then all of a sudden it switched. And I feel like he needed... That's what you needed mm-hmm. to switch your way to an A. So... Well, maybe you don't know what you were saying. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe you do. Actually, maybe you do know what maybe. you were saying. Like I don't know. You know, never because had just before. because the fact that. So what was the? Why did you speaking in tongues make you change your grade to an A? Mm. It wasn't me speaking in tongues. It well, was like I said, this whole month mm-hmm. I've been diligently seeking him and my Mm -hmm. car has been my prayer closet yeah so it was like um it was like the top of the cherry but it wasn't necessarily it was a lot of things leading up to it yeah a lot of time confirming voices certain things that i was looking to god to answer and he answered directly through somebody random coming and speaking into my life or just it was like a whole lot of stuff leading up to it. I feel like the Holy Spirit yeah. just spoke to your spirit, even though you don't know maybe right. it just really spoke to you. Yeah, and that, and that's sense. that's all it took for you to be like, and it, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, and it feels like, yes. like almost like um clarity. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. And you don't yeah. know what he said. That's yeah. what I'm saying. You probably you know but you don't yeah. you don't know. Yeah. More like, of that feeling. <laughs> yeah. Okay, clarity. Even this morning, I woke up around maybe 3, 4 o'clock with downloads. Mm-hmm. Just took my phone and just... Yeah. So that's why I said he's preparing me for something. It doesn't mean that, oh, I'm better than you because I can speak in tongues. Child yeah. please. No. So no I right, just, right. First, I just love the Lord <laughs> and I'm glad that I had that encounter with yeah. him. Yeah. And the thing is, you didn't... Well, I'm assuming you didn't ask... God, oh, I let me have to get yeah, for, yeah. You weren't you weren't prompted. You was, was just in the flow and right. allowed God to work however He He planned to work. I wasn't gonna go here now, and I'm, I'm gonna get get to Frankie, but I have this mirror. I don't know if you guys can see it. So she I'm, went deeper. <laughs> she went deeper, deeper Johnny. <laughs> deeper. So if you can't see, it says deeper, and it's a man a diving in, mm-hmm. um, diving in uh, water, swimming. And the reason why I pulled this out is because we were a part of a, what you call it, a cohort or a It group? was just a, a experience. Experience. Mm-hmm. experience mm-hmm. That the Holy Spirit put. Actually, you, you, you okay. tell it. And so, you... um, deeper, 
deeper is something that I feel like a lot of times us in general are on the surface level about a lot of things. And a lot of things that you, you may feel like, oh, I just behave like that's just me. That's just who I am. But if you pull back the layers and go deeper, then you can feel, really understand, well, you can track why you act the way that you act. Mm -hmm. So it's more of an internal work. Deeper yeah. is a more of internal work. And the download that God gave me this morning is an extension of this. Mm. Deeper is God is calling. I, I'm speaking of because I have a relationship with God, but I feel like God is calling his people to go deeper with him. Mm -hmm. We can't go deeper until we deal with the internal wounds that we have. Mm -hmm. So deeper was that the first part was just doing some basic work. Mm -hmm. The next part is going to a higher spiritual level. Um, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But no, the, the reason why I brought it up is because we did this, what, a few months ago. Um, and it was like, we did it and it's like, okay, now go and see how God mm -hmm. is going to usher that depending upon your intentionality, right? And, and I think um, the encounter that I had yesterday was an extension of what started there. Because mm -hmm. I did the work of digging into my past, digging into mm -hmm. my hurts, Ooh, digging mm -hmm. into my insecurities, and just like uprooting certain things. Mm -hmm. And um, it was just a continuation of what Deeper opened up for me. And what I like about, she and she put this together, which is very creative, and on the back it says, trust without borders. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, you know, the compact mirror where it's the regular view where you can just see you can see, but you can't see deep. But then if you want to go deeper, you look on this side, like, oh, let me, depending on if you need a face or not. But, <laughs> but you're able to see things that you yeah. couldn't see before. You can only do that by going in the deep end. So thank you for that testimony, really, because the fact that you had an encounter that you never experienced before and you didn't ask for it, you just was in the position, a surrendered place of allowing the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Yes. And as we go through year to year, month to month, hour, minute, whatever, mm -hmm. That's the move. That's the vibe because it doesn't matter what we're doing. We need him. We need that relationship. We need that faith in order to accomplish whatever your goal is. It doesn't matter what it is. That faith, that going deeper, trusting without borders, that is what helps you move. Um. So the reason why I gave myself a C plus, like I said, it. it's not, it's, I feel like I've been kind of even keel. Mm -hmm. So I guess, you know, C's average in that, you know, you never want to get a C in school, but I just feel like I've been kind of coasting, but I do in waiting for him to mm -hmm. move me. Maybe that's what it is. And I'm kind of maybe being a little impatient. <laughs> I'm like, okay, let's go, let's go, let's do something. But I think that's why I'm grading myself a C. Not anything that he has, you know, he, he's doing anything myself a C because I've been a little bit impatient. But I've had to talk to my talk myself down and not pushing faster than he wants to go. Mm -hmm. And that all in the way that he always works with me. Let everything, let me set everything up. Mm -hmm. You just, you're just, you just be ready to move when I, when it's time to move. Right. And I feel like he's setting up those pieces. He sure is. He's setting it up. He's just <laughs> putting them all together. Um, mm -hmm. So when it's time to go, it's, it's going to be time to go. So I guess that's why I'm giving myself a seat. So I don't want it to seem like it's necessarily bad. It's just, I'm, it's, I feel like right now I'm just you, coasting. You, yeah. Yeah. I'm just coasting mm -hmm. through right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. um, and now, I guess... Not that, and it's been highs. It's been highs. We have, you know, I've had a good year overall. It's just that if we're talking about just internally and just my thought process, I feel like, yeah. Okay, okay. Because I, I want to make sure, again, you understand in the grade, when you're saying just average, it's you grading the level of work, intention, focus, faith, overcoming, mm -hmm. all encompassing. Not so much of mm -hmm. what to achieve, but like just how you've handled the internal battle which it can be sometime mm -hmm. and the external battle mm -hmm. that requires faith so you're saying like different things though so well no it's like holistically and then i know it seems like we're probably beating a dead horse i don't even know why, why is that a saying but anyway, it's, it's, it's to really make sure people understand how they are handling life some people may feel like man i'm doing so bad because they haven't achieved anything Say they want a house, right? Mm -hmm. Or they want to get married. Mm -hmm. That hadn't happened. So they're feeling defeated. Like, man, what is it that I'm not doing? Mm -hmm. Well, you're still achieving because 
You have to show up despite not having mm -hmm. those things. You have to have joy despite not having those things. Mm -hmm. You have to have the right perspective, even though you want to be like, freak this. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm coming from that lens of how everything was handled. And I'm going to use a perfect, a perfect example for me. Mm -hmm. We are celebrating Christmas at my parents' house this year. I have not had any desire to celebrate Christmas in the way that we used to because Christmas, my mom was everything as it relates to that. But it's so interesting that we all are on one accord to have Christmas at my parents' house this year. Mm -hmm. To me, that is a huge win, right? And it means that faith-wise, perspective-wise, we're just in a different space where we're like, okay, let, let's go back home, mm. right? To me, that is a huge win. That's internal work that's needed. Because mm -hmm. if we really didn't want to do it, we wouldn't be doing it. We wouldn't be doing it because, oh, okay, it's a good idea. Nah, Frank would be like, nah, me and Lamar stay at home. Mm -hmm. I mean, she literally would say that, right? But she's coming. I don't know. I, I see that as a huge win because mm -hmm. the whole grief thing, there are stages, it's not just about, oh, mama's gone, it's Christmas. It's just stages of acceptance. That's good. Stages you know what I mean? of acceptance, mm -hmm. yes. I'm trying to talk without getting emotional, that's but it's, it's big. Yeah, stages of acceptance. It's, it's really big. So that's kind of the lens I'm looking at. And even, get it together. Okay, even with me, just this year, it's been so many amazing things. But even in the, in the amazing things, it's like, that. this is a lot of weight. Well, this is a lot. Like, okay, so can I put this down and do this? Like, I always, for me, I always want to be comfortable, right? If I have to do something, like I have to do this interview, or I need to prep for this interview, no. You're going to do three things today because you're going to learn how to multitask. Because in life, everything is not going to line up. Mm -hmm. Everything's not going to feel good. Right. Everything's not going to be comfortable. Yeah, you definitely stop. You take your rest. You you know, wusa. But then... You may have an opportunity where you focus on one thing. You may not. Again, for me, it's however God is leading me. Mm -hmm. So while it may seem like I'm doing the most to others, I'm probably doing the least because if I'm not fulfilling the purpose within the most, mm -hmm. then I'm missing the marks. So I rated myself, graded myself a B because not just with all the moving parts, but just, just a lot mm -hmm. that I had to deal with this year, right? Mm -hmm. Good and challenging, but I dealt with it. And even in the heat of certain challenges, I was in the heat of assignments, like putting on things and, and, and leading efforts and projects. Mm -hmm. I had to still show up. Show up. But I showed up. But I had to do that faith it till you make it slash fake it till you make it. Like me, I always say, I ain't got it. I ain't got it. And, I, and to be honest, guy, I don't think I want to do this anymore. There's a lot, right? Mm -hmm. When I'm in myself, in my emotions. Mm -hmm. But when I had that conversation and I can do all things through Christ that shifts mm -hmm. me. That's the fake it part. Mm -hmm. I can do all things through Christ that shifts me. Okay. Changes. I can do yep. all things through right. Christ that shifts me. I'm doing all things. I am doing all. It's a right. knuck if you buck right. in your spirit. Right. Yep. Yep. And that comes from my relationship. Relationship. Yeah, I'm strong because I'm dependent upon his power. It's his strength. His strength. Again, I'm not telling you to change your grade, but I'm just oh, looking I'm at not, Yeah, no, no I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think I'm, just, things, I'm just trying to break it, keep, you know, break it mm -hmm, apart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think something take away from what you stated is that faith means just showing up. That's good. Sometimes that's all you can do. That's all you can do. Just show up. Mm-hmm. Take one step at a time. Mm -hmm. Get out the bed. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's simple as it is. And the thing about it is, he knows what you need. Right. It's like nothing's a surprise to him, right? right? Yeah. So nothing is a surprise to him. He he's always there. He's always available. He's always delivering that strength and every single thing you need. Mm -hmm. So he knows when you you ain't got it that day. Mm -hmm. So I mean, so. We don't we, we don't have to do this alone. He is no, literally yes. always there. That's yes. the beautiful part. Yeah. He's literally always there. And he it it's okay for you to fake it until you make it. Mm -hmm. I want to end with the until don't, don't you just make fake it. it and keep faking yes. it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because he's like, I got you. I got you today, daughter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got yeah. you today, child. I got you. Yeah. I know. I'm gonna give you this grace. But we're going to need to figure it out. Mm -hmm. But I got you right now. Right. Yeah. 
And that's why, and that's why I think that's what sometimes is missing is missing with this whole thing. We and, and just like um, what your conference for, uh, strength is under overrated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's at strong, strong, strong is overrated. overrated. Yeah, excuse mm -hmm. me. Um, it, it is about his strength in us and f faking it just for faking its sake. Right. And not getting to a place where you can really tap into him or 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 tap into his strength, so you can make it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, for the, for the sake of this conversation, and of course you can still mm -hmm. use fa fake it. Since it's faith talk, I'm gonna say faith it, uh, and, and give and given my des mm -hmm. description of it before because you're faking it, but you're really faithing it, mm -hmm. and that is, I, I guess the reason why I want to change the words because. I know what you're saying, and we all practice what you're saying, mm -hmm. but there are people out there that don't know how to make it, so they just fake it. Mm -hmm. And the more they hear faith, then they'll start hearing believing, then they'll mm -hmm. start hearing trusting. So while, yeah, you may be faking it, but they see more faith than faking. Does that make sense? Just for the sake of it registering as it relates to our, our foundation of faith and relationship with Christ. So I also think, too, that people just don't understand the word faith. You go, you segue into my next thing, so let, let's, let's break it down. They don't understand what that is. So faith, uh, a few or a couple months ago when I, I did a faith talk, in that, when I say faith talk, I was working out. I didn't plan on recording, but God said, no, I don't want you dressed up. I want you sweaty with the, the salt from the sweat driving. Like, I want you in a raw form because oftentimes y'all come to me dressed up or in an image or faking it. I want you raw. Let's, let's strip all that stuff off and speak. Mm -hmm. And so the first conversation was about what faith is. And it was about the beauty of faith, the beauty of the father, the beauty of somebody that's greater than me, that's got me, that I ain't got to worry about it, even if I'm worried about it, right? He's got to figure it out. Just the the the... The, the the pretty part of faith. Then I did another one. I was like, man, maybe I shouldn't do this. And I was in the thick and the heat of a challenge. I'm like, these people got to know. Like, I'm not going to always be out here talking about how beautiful faith is, in, even though it is. But in everything, even like y'all are married. Yeah, well, yeah, y'all are married. You love your husbands. But you don't always like your husbands. Mm -hmm. Your husbands don't always look, when I say attractive, meaning as far as behaviors or whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's life. Faith. I said, sometimes faith is depressing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes faith is lonely. Sometimes faith is frustrating as bleep. I will, I, you have to add that for emphasis. And I can go on, but I want to stop because I already have given my raw and dirty and what's not popular and what you won't he, would not hear about faith. I want you guys to give your definition of faith and give like a, a, a multiple side of that from the pretty and the beautiful and just how it's so just therapeutic, like your car. Mm -hmm. But even as you were describing that, it's like I I, I went there kind of like, ooh, that's a, that's a safety net. That's comfort. Mm -hmm. But then sometimes when he's giving you a word or giving you a challenge or even a blessing of a whole family, mm -hmm. there's some fire there mm -hmm. that don't feel pretty. But it's still faith. Well, I don't know where we get this idea that faith has to be in a box and it has to be pretty with a bow on it. I don't know where we get this idea from that just because I have faith doesn't mean I have I don't have down days, mm -hmm. you know, because faith is being transparent. Right. It's transparency with God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, other people may see you operating in faith. But are you willing to just be real with God and yourself? But he knows and just, anyway. Yeah, but people don't think that. But, you know, just, really? just be real. Wow. Yeah, just be real enough to say, I'm not okay. Mm -hmm. I still love you, God. Mm -hmm. This situation sucks. Mm -hmm. But I'm not okay. Mm -hmm. People think that, oh, no, no, I got faith. Oh, oh no. One thing I cannot stand, my husband and I are over in ministry. Um, shout out to Flint Ridge East Baptist Church. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but one thing that I cannot stand is the programming that religion has done to people mm -hmm. here. And there are people who literally feel like something is wrong with them if they say they're not okay. They don't mm -hmm. even give themselves permission mm -hmm. to say, I ain't good today. Mm -hmm. It's like, Okay, I, I I accepted Jesus into my heart and I 
went ahead and stripped away my emotions. Right. So I no longer am allowed right. to have I no emotions. Longer am human. Right. I'm no longer human, <laughs> and I have to be this robot. I'm blessed. How did you Couldn't be better. <laughs> I get that, but sis, are you okay? Yeah. Right. Like, can we get to the real? Yeah. We don't have to do all that because that's the literally the only way that you can be used. Mm -hmm. You'll be mm -hmm. no good to yourself or him if you're faking it mm -hmm. to not make it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have to get go deeper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And be real with him and, and, and tell him you are not okay. Lord, help me. Show me. Mm. Bring people in my life. A sermon, a friend, a song, something. Just you have to stay talking to him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want you to talk um, a little bit um, just real quick about mm -hmm. when you said that after Auntie Mildred passed away, you was just like, I ain't going to talk to him. But the whole time you said I was talking to him. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's just like, I, I mean, I was basically side-eyeing him, twisting my mouth. Respectfully, Jesus. But, <laughs> but I was okay. just, I was just, I, I was like, I don't want to talk to you right now. So in order for you not to talk to somebody, yeah. they, they have to be, there has to be a somebody to talk to. Right. Like, I'm not talking to this air. Like, right. it's somebody, but, so I always knew he was there. I was just really mad at him. Mm -hmm. I was really, really mad at him for taking my mom. Mm -hmm. So while, you know, I, I was like, I'm just, I'm not talking to you right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm mad. I don't understand. And you're going to have to tell me something. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. like, you, you're going to have to tell like all of this. Like he's looking at me like. You're doing all this. Yeah, you're talking to All of this. this. <laughs> you're going to you have to tell me something. And he's looking at me like, I really don't. Yeah. But, um, so, but it was, just, again, it was the whole, you know, just continuing having, even not, not talking to him talking to him and then um as time went on that starting to penetrate and and mm -hmm. my heart starting to soften and letting him back in little by little um reluctantly it, and it was still that transition time when i was always waiting for the other shoe to drop mm -hmm. like i was like go walking in like okay i can i can start trusting you again yeah, yeah. i can start trusting you again but oh gosh what something else and i i i, I I literally wake up, used to wake up. I'm not so much now. It's a lot less now, but I literally used to wake up with a pit, sometimes with a pit in my stomach, mm. like with this pit in my stomach all day long, like waiting for something bad to happen. Wow. Whatever that looks like, just wait. Like I'm talking about not like a little nauseated. Mm. So I had to work through that whole transition. So I was like, okay, I kind of still trust you a little bit. I mean, I'm starting to build that trust back up to you, but, but mm, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And it's not, it, and it's not that, so for me, it was, I, I, I knew he was there. <clears throat> I knew he had control over a thing, but I was always scared and still working through that. Actually, if I'm being honest now, I was scared that he wasn't going to do what I wanted. Mm -hmm. Meaning if something happened and I'm like praying for X, Y, and Z. It, he wasn't going to allow that to happen. Mm -hmm. And I know he has control over all of that. But that, I ha I'm still fighting, but I'm better through that. Of It mm -hmm. might not happen the way you want it to happen. Right. It's true, though. And, what you're going, and so, I, so that was that anxiety with that, too. You are in control of everything. Mm -hmm. And I trust you. Right. Even if I got a, yes, I trust you. Um. So yeah. I, I, so I, there was a, it was a whole transitional thing with that, and like I said, I'm better, but I still I'm still a little wobbly, but I'm a lot better. I'm not waking up with that pit in my stomach mm -hmm. every time now. Right. Right. No, that's that's good. Then that's very accurate. Um. Yeah. Very accurate. On on the way here, I was um listening to a podcast, Craig Groeschel, who's I love him. amazing. And we speak about just real and practical. Mm -hmm. That's how he, he is. He doesn't preach, he speaks. Mm -hmm. But this one was an actual conversation, a podcast. And um, he said a quote that I wrote down, and I think it, it aligns to what we're talking about here. He said, impress people with your strengths and connect with them through their weakness. And I know for me, I, there were a couple of people that assumed um, and there's no negativity on their part, you know, whatever I exude, I exude, I, you know, whatever, but they figure that I don't struggle in my faith like they do. When they said that, I literally busted out laughing, like, what? 
what? Mm -hmm. But two folk, two parts. One, and I said this when I had to speak um, for a program at a church, that perhaps why people why people see so much strength is because we're not afraid to be weak. Mm, yeah. Because when the, the word says when you're weak, then that's when you're made strong because God now can operate at another level. Especially when my mom passed, people was like, we're so strong. I'm looking like, I don't know what y'all seeing, mm -hmm. but I know what I was feeling. But what he was carrying me, how he was carrying me and, and, and what he was displaying did not mirror what was going on inside. Mm -hmm. And so one thing about me is I'm not going to vent to everybody. I'm not going to complain to everybody. You will that never, part. ever that see part. me <laughs> go on Facebook. Yes. Talk about, please pray for me. No. Now I'm very vulnerable as the spirit leads and speak about my mom or do storytelling. But whatever I may be going through, it, there's a lot that we go through that you will never know. And so people think that you're being too strong and doing it by yourself. You see these two here and the one behind the camera. That is my circle. So I don't think God designed it where you'd be vulnerable with everybody, but you better have one, two, three, four, however many you think you need to go to and be raw and dirty, to strip off everything. Everything. And so if you have that, then people may not see the weakness because you go back to your to your corner and you, you fuel up. You, you you drink some water, you wipe off the sweat, mm -hmm. and that means prayer. They pray. And so let's just talk about a little bit about pray, because, prayer, praying, because whoever your friends are, family are, you know, you have different friends that represent different categories, so right. you know who to go to. Sometimes you better be careful venting to the wrong person because they may usher you down into a space of depression because they will meet you where you are. Mm -hmm. Not saying that you shouldn't meet people where they are, but meet them and then let's find a way to lift them up. Not fix them, not solve it, but just add inspiration. You have to know who to go to to do that. So when you speak about prayer, mm -hmm. how do you describe prayer for people? And I'm even because I was about to ask some context. I'll I'll get to me, sis. I'm talking to myself. Mm -hmm. How do you describe prayer in simple terms, relatable terms, attractive terms? Simple term is conversation. There's different levels to prayer. There are some times where prayer I'm receiving instructions from God. There are sometimes in prayer I'll have no words but tears. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It, it, okay. it's, it's not one shoe, one size fit all. Mm -hmm. Prayer is so many different things, so but it's, it's mm -hmm. really the core of prayer is relationship. Yes. Yes. Do I have a relationship? If, do I trust you? Am I willing to be transparent? Am I willing to take instructions? Am I, you know, so it's so many things that prayer could be. Absolutely. Prayer is not just one thing. Yeah. There are some times that I'm like, thank you, Lord. I'm just glorifying him. I'm mm -hmm. just like, Worship and honoring him. Oh God, I thank you. Oh God, I thank you. And then the other times it's like, God, I can't, I can't do this. I'm about to tap out, mm -hmm. and I need you to come mm -hmm. to my rescue. Mm -hmm. So prayer is so many different things for me. So it's yeah, not, I can't just give one. It's not one thing, right. not Frankie. One. When you talk about prayer, how would you describe prayer from a personal standpoint? Um, pretty much everything that Gito said. Uh, it's a lot of things. It's not just one thing. I mean. The bottom line, it is a conversation. It's you're talking um, to God. Or you're just quiet mm -hmm. and thinking. Um, it's just so, it's so many things. Mm -hmm. It's so many things. Mm -hmm. Everything, I, I feel like I'm just going to repeat. Yeah, no, yeah. That was yeah. a perfect yeah, answer. It's, that, it's, yeah. yeah, it's absolutely so many different things. Mm -hmm. And again, like we're talking about religion and how people think prayer is specific words or you have to roll off all the scriptures or or do all of that and that's not that's not the only, only that's a yeah. certain volume Maybe volume praying. or right. you know speaking the way that you tongue. speak or even not saying it's not but you don't have even to. even like the to like the intonation of your voice and rise mm -hmm. and lift and mm -hmm. it's the dramatics it's lord it's lord i need you lord I'm tired. I ain't got it today, Jesus. You know, it's just, and I, I, we just, again, like we talked about at the beginning, we just need to break what we've learned mm -hmm. and know that he does not want religion. He wants relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so. it's so interesting because I'll be at dinner or friend's home and we're just talking. I mean, talking. Everybody's just talking. Okay, y'all, let's pray. Oh, oh, no, no, no. 
I'm like, and I don't blame them. I blame what the, the church and religion the that have done. Because I used to be, you know, that person where I'm, it's not that I didn't pray, but it's like as I'm they praying, I'm certain, so nervous. It's, it's like public speaking. Way. Yeah, because I'm like, I don't know how to. You not you don't have to. Now there's levels. Like I always say, there's levels to everything. All of it is important. It just depends on how God chooses to use you or you choose to, you know, relate to God. But eventually you will get to the part of quoting scriptures, maybe even speaking tongues or doing the different cadence to for, you know, the, the effect. But either way, it needs to be Holy Spirit um, led and authentic. Yeah, I right? think it's your heart posture, posture. towards God. You know, yes. am, am I leaning towards him in this conversation or is it all about me? Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah, your heart, your, your heart posture matters. Apart I, I, I'm sorry. I think for those that don't understand prayer and what, what that means, just don't overthink it. Mm -hmm. Just keep it simple. Keep it simple. If you were talking to your girlfriend, if you was talking to someone else how would you speak to them mm -hmm. just keep it simple mm -hmm. don't make it don't make keep it simple keep it simple and and that's actually biblical mm -hmm. because the word said we should come to god like children mm -hmm. how did my children come to me when they want something uh mom you know i saw this new phone mm -hmm. I, you know i kind of like it you know i don't know do you think i can get it that's prayer. That's, it, <laughs> that's talking to my father it's conversation and you have that's to start for somewhere them. Yeah. that's best for them so don't ever try to like she said overthink it. It's 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 not a one size. It's not, it's a, not a faith. A, it's yeah. not faith is so many. It's so many it's dimensions. Not. Yes. And when dimension. you speak about prayer, just to add a piece that wasn't covered, um, it's protection. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. guidance. Mm -hmm. It's war, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna stop there with the war. It's, it's spiritual warfare. Right. So, and you know, my mom used to say all kinds of stuff or just be what we thought would be an extra, right? When she praying, you know, oh, be quiet or, you know, like be in certain positions. But when you get to certain levels, you understand that this is not a game. It's not. We're not in here just talking while we're saying, yeah, you can talk or pray. This is warfare. Mm -hmm. I'm real intentional when I pray. Mm -hmm. And I have to make sure that that person, that thing, I'm called to it. Otherwise, I'm fighting the fight. That's not my battle. It's so many different layers to this thing. It's so deep. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, ultimately, with me speaking about prayer, and the reason why I'm bringing this up in the reflections and faith talk, I'm thinking about this year. And again, this is tying back to the year and going into the new year. What you need to sustain whatever blessing that you have or that God has for you. Talking to the Lord, praying, however you describe it, mm -hmm. that is just to make sure you're on track. And it's not even about me, like, okay, God, I want this. Do I go here? No, God, what am I, why am I here? Mm -hmm. Where am I going? Okay, you say do this, how? Like, it's it's just instructions. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I don't know. I just wanted to, mm -hmm. to touch on that because it's so important. Because what really frustrates me is people treat prayer like it's just an activity. Mm -hmm. So th I've heard comments all the time. Yeah, pray, but no, 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 no. There's no but. The prayer is prayer is instructions mm -hmm. so it's not like a but like oh yeah pray but yeah you're praying for instructions then you act it's not like i'm praying and i'm just sitting in like doing mindless activity mm -hmm. you're praying for instructions you're praying for strength you're praying for whatever it is you need for that day so what are you going to tell those people that said um i don't i don't hear from like how what I cannot remember who I wouldn't call the person name mm -hmm. out, but who it was. But it's like they don't know. Okay, so praying for instructions. What does that mean? I don't hear from him. Got you. And yeah. I'm, I'm asking. No, him. you're asking because again, it's a relationship, so it's different from everyone, and mm -hmm. it's interesting because listening to Craig Rochelle's podcast, which I remember the lady's name. She was like, you know, I hear from God very clearly. I know my vision. I know my purpose. Mm -hmm. But I'll be honest, sometimes I don't know. So I'm praying I haven't heard from him. She said, sometimes I will beg like, God, you, oh I, I got to do this. Something. I need to hear from right. you. And sometimes he doesn't say anything. So she said, well, you know what? I'm not hearing from you. And I'm feeling like this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm going to trust that this is the route. Mm -hmm. If it's not, reroute me. Mm -hmm. And that's real. Mm -hmm. That is real. Mm -hmm. Sometimes literally he'll reroute you. Other times he'll have you go. But I just, 
in my mind, you know, I'm so deep in thoughts about faith now. I think about a car. Okay, just go. And I'm not going to say that. I want to see what you're going to do. Just go. And, it's, and there are guardrails. Mm -hmm. So he know clearly if his hands wasn't around you, you will fall off. Mm -hmm. But it's like it's kind of you're going and you don't know, but you're just going. But he's kind of, you know, like with bumper cars so you won't fall over the ledge and guiding you that way. Sometimes you don't know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to trust in the God that you just had the conversation with. I'm about to go. But then sometimes, even though you don't hear from him, you may get a feeling, I want to go and I think I'm supposed to go, but I think I'm just going to still stay and chill. Mm -hmm. It's a trial and error. Mm -hmm. When it comes to faith, there is nothing that's going to be a smooth mm -hmm. sailing. There is nothing that's going to always be clear, cut, and dry. There's levels to this thing. The yes. levels depend on your effort. But at the end of the day, what I think about is I'm serving a big God who is sitting up there. And if I'm going the wrong way, he knows it. Mm -hmm. And if I'm really being intentional about seeking him before going this way, he knows I'm not just doing what I want to do. I'm doing what I think he's called me to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but what you're talking about, it took you years to train and develop the ear to be able to discern that, oh, this is his voice versus my voice. There's a lot of people, and I want to encourage somebody out there that... Don't get discouraged if you feel like, well, dang, Jenna always says she heard God say, and, and that's you know, Gita said, said, and Becky said, yeah, that's why and, I was asking and, the question. And then they start feeling intimidated. Yeah, that's God. true. It's supposed that's to true. be a certain way, but yep. you have to understand that God knows exactly where you're at. Right. And um, be consistent. That's it. In pursuing him. That, okay. Thank you. That's why I was like trying That's to good. So yeah. it's always so you you have to start at that first level. If we're talking about somebody who's like how does this even happen? Mm -hmm. Start with the talking to him. Mm -hmm. Just start every day and start mm -hmm. at that level and just be consistent with it. That's mm -hmm. why, that's exactly where I was trying to get. And that's really good because that's how I got to where I am. And in in hindsight when I reflect I was like you weren't talking to me. I just didn't know it was you. Like, it's a, it was like a gut feeling, but like a... People call it intuition. Mm -hmm. People call it yeah, intuition. Yeah, that's what people call it, but it was mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit. No, no, no that's no, what no, I'm saying. Yeah, that's what people yeah. call it. And a lot of those times, that gut feeling is the Holy is Spirit. Him, but it's, again, it's about connection and the relationship mm -hmm. and being consistent until you start. Because that's how... That's how I know. Yeah. That's yeah, how I know. Yeah. That's not how I should or should not be doing something. Yeah. That's how I know. I don't hear, I don't hear a voice. I just feel that gut feeling. You have a him. combination. And what's interesting is when you speak about relationship, we in this room, we can talk to each other without even opening our mouths. Mm -hmm. Right? We can peep something without even discussing what we peeped. But we know each other enough to know what we're thinking. Mm -hmm. It may not be verbatim. I, I probably can't sit here and say the full sentence of what's going on in Gito's head or Frankie's head. But I can say what they're thinking and we're on target. Why? Because we have a relationship. There you go. When you think about the father, that's it. God specifically chose these two, right? And at first I thought it was going to be me and Gito speaking, um... Like Frank ain't going to, cause Frankie, she don't do all this. Right. She'll do it if she have to, or she need to, or she feel like that's what she be she should be doing. In which that's the case for all of us, right? But it's not always what she feels that she needs to be doing. So I wasn't even going to ask her. I said, let me ask her. I asked her. She was like, yeah. I was like, oh wow. So you know this is about to be bomb. Mm -hmm. And the last time I was over here, I envisioned in her dining room having a conversation. I just didn't think it would be with her. I was going to ask her if I could use her house. Really? <laughs> really? Seriously. I was like, oh, this is dope. This is dope. But I just want to park here just for a second when you speak about faith. Because these two, you know, oftentimes people see my younger sister. These two are in the background. Um, and they are towers, right? Strong. They aren't strong. It's their faith. That's the difference. So it makes their, their strength even more solid. So when I was thinking about Frankie, I was thinking about Frankie's power. So she's a personal trainer. I always go back to the story. If you touch her, hey Amen. <laughs> Stop it, man. It's strength. Get strength. It power. There's, there's force <laughs> that comes with that. And not only that, only that, she has the power to influence. So us and uh, our younger cousins and stuff. She was the leader. 
Um, she was the one that everybody followed. And I, I don't know why this came to mind when oh, I was getting Lord. dressed. And y'all may not remember. So I'm I'm the middle child, which obviously I'm the best child, favorite child, the, the one everybody looks, you know, to do things, to, you know, right? So, but, you know, there were challenges growing up because the middle child syndrome, whatever that means, right? So I was, we were at Countryside. We were at, um, is it Countryside? Yeah, Countryside, neighborhood on the west side of Charlotte, north side of Charlotte. And we were, just got through eating, and I believe it was super rice. I don't know why I'm being so descriptive, but we were there. It was me, Frankie, Gito, Tanya. I don't think Tita was there, but I think it was just us. Maybe Miki. Um, and so I was cleaning. We were cleaning up, so I was sweeping the floor. So I had a pile of dirt, and I believe Frankie had another pile of dirt or something. I had just swept it up. And she was like, oh, wait, Janet, before you empty this, can you add this to it? In my mind, I thought I was thinking logically. I was not trying to be difficult. I was like, well, no, 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 no. This is too much. Let me enter this first. And Frank was kind of like, so she was like, you know what? Let me do it. Let me do it. So when I speak about her power and influence, so now she wants to clown me. And she wants to form an alliance. So I clearly remember she was acting like the dust pan was so heavy. <laughs> After she put the dirt there, I remember. So then Gito and Tanya was helping her. <laughs> you remember? And I especially remember Gito and everybody was so excited to follow Frankie and do what she was doing. You remember, right? So she was being dramatic to make it seem like I was being dramatic for not adding. I really was just thinking, well, let me enter this. Frankie was like, just add it. And, and to be honest, I don't think either one of us was wrong. But the fact that she was like, Showtime is the perfect opportunity. Everybody formed in line. So I'm sitting there feeling bad or getting defensive. <laughs> that what kind of power did get has? <laughs> Or what, another time I was mad or mad about something, she told them, don't speak to me. <laughs> so they were all walking. And I remember Frank was leaning and tying and get to her walking. You remember? I was like, what kind of power is this? <laughs> and why did y'all follow? They follow every time. Frankie was cool. Yeah, every time. When it came to babysitting, she created different. Because you, you first thought, you thought I was stretching right with the with the story i was like no i remember this i especially remember Gita. everybody was like oh oh and they were just laughing at me and i was just like so power not just in reference to her ability to to move and influence and to have followers and make things happen but power as it relates to positioning in faith and it took her taking a step back so i always go to her personal training when she trains I'm beast mode. Everybody know, like, I was working out. Everybody, oh, Johnette, she a beast. So I'm going to Frankie. I'm thinking, oh, yeah, okay, let's, you know, let me show Frankie what I can do, you know, impress her. She make you feel like you don't know, like, do you work out, sis? Because she don't work on the big muscles that everybody can see. She goes deep. Whatever she's telling you to do, it's, it's touching a muscle that I've never felt before, right? But when you're working on the inside, foundation. Mm hmm. hmm. So that's how she does with faith. Would you agree? Yes. And I know that's all of us because faith is internal, but it's just different. And she's not going to allow anybody to rush her process. Yes. A lot of times they say, oh, get out of your emotions. Oh, don't process. Don't. Everybody knows what they can do for their faith, for their relationship, yeah, right? Sometimes true. it's not good for me to process my emotions because mm -hmm. I'm ready to just float and just mm -hmm. stay in my emotions for days, right? Mm -hmm. And other times, no, stop. Before you go here, make sure you deal with this. Mm -hmm. Do you want to? I don't want to be doing all the talking. You want to touch on that, or did I kind of cover it? No, you absolutely covered it. Yeah, so yeah, absolutely covered it. that power comes with that. Not just physical power, natural power, but power as it relates to the Holy Spirit because you had time to dwell in it like a nice mug of hot tea. So, anyway. And that's the thing, like, like you said, it, it's different for different people, yes. it's different for different situations. Yes. Because, like you said, because you are more emotional, sometimes it's not good to for be in the, sit. For, sit in there because you know it's going to take you all the way to the left. Mm -hmm. yep. so somebody, <laughs> somebody else, they might need to sit in it and process it. It's again, it's, it's just it, different. It's just different for different people, and mm -hmm. that's what we need to get across to the masses that right. it, it does not look the same mm -hmm. for each person or mm -hmm. each individual. Right. It's totally different. Right. That's and it's good. okay. It is okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Yep. As long as you make it. Mm -hmm. Get to the make it. Mm -hmm. make Whatever it. that looks it. like and whenever that is, get to the make yeah. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that's good. Because if you're just faithing it and you ain't seeing results, 
that's that's everything. Yeah, right, that's everything. right. Mm-hmm. What's 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 the end goal? Yes. What, or at least where where can you see the finish line somewhere? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I just thought about an image in regards to working out. There's a lot of people that have closet full of workout clothes. <laughs> ain't been in nobody's gym. Fake it, never made it. That's good. That's, that's the difference. Spent years <laughs> faking it. That's faking it. That's good. Oh, I just worked out. Yeah, and you don't see a video from them for months. No. <laughs> do you? That's what you need to do, but yeah. you, you might want to start making it. You won't see results. You won't see results. Like that. Yes. Yes. You won't see results yes. like that. Results. You, will, you will not make it like that. That, that, that was a good example mm-hmm. since we're talking about working out. So, speaking about Wilma, Gito, sorry, mm-hmm. calling her both names, but when I look at her, I think about uh, the word that came to me because I sat there, I said, How will I describe Gito? But the word that just dropped in my spirit was solid. Mm-hmm. She's always been solid. Th- does that make sense? Absolutely. She's all, even from a little, I remember when they first came from like, when well, no, no, Anta Ava came first. No, and we, you came, we came together. Came together. But she was just solid. Like, she wasn't rude when we met her. Stoic. Is that a better word? Stoic too? Stoic means like. Yeah. Just. Like kind of yeah yeah yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah but even God, as a young yeah kid. even as yeah so I guess stoic solid yeah, but all the same. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I I don't know how to unpack this um but she's just been solid and another thing that came to me when I when when solid was download downloaded I thought about mama so when I spoke about mentorship earlier. It has nothing to do with age. It has to do with experience, mindset, your your relationship level, all of it. Even if you don't have a relationship, you know, there's opportunities there, right? Mm-hmm. Mama used to always say, um, this is after Gito, I guess, was in college and, uh, you know, an adult, have her family. She used to always, I forgot specifically what she said, but more so like she always admired Gito or look up to Gito as it relates to her faith. Mm-hmm. She's always been solid. Not saying she's always been here in faith, but each stage, she's solid. Even as a kid coming from Liberia, dealing with whatever, all the stuff she had to deal with, meeting cousins you never met, don't know their heart, don't know if they really want you. You know, all of that, but she was solid. Mm-hmm. She was always a lady, never rude, always pleasant, but also a mystery. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, that's right? Mm-hmm. Sometimes you're like... I know she's not mad, but what's going on? Like, Mm -hmm. solid. Look at what she's done with her kids, her family, her husband, the many challenges. You go to Kingdom Huddle, you will hear some of it. So that's an incentive because, again, this is not about, oh, go follow her so she can have likes. And No, Mm -hmm. these these are life-changing, impactful conversations. Do you Mm -hmm. have anything to add to the solid? Or you... No, I think that's that's perfect. Like, uh, again, solid, absolutely, and stoic. Stoic is what um, your word. Just, yeah. it, for some reason, just keeps mm-hmm. coming to me too. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, even keel, mm-hmm. and that's why I think Gito and I are. Well, when I say like in regards to just internally, mm-hmm. she she was always internal, mm-hmm. always internal. Mm-hmm. I could see that even. When we were kids, and now she's just be thinking in her yep, head. Yep. Even sitting down, like we're playing, we're doing things, mm-hmm. and I can tell that she was processing and thinking, mm-hmm. uh, thinking in her head. So mm-hmm. I yep. absolutely agree with that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I I just had to highlight that, and that's why I got put them on this platform. That's why I'm sitting in the middle because she's been my power to help me through. She's been a solid rock, not. Compared to God, but it's that solid, stable mm-hmm. rock consistency. Mm-hmm. Something else that uh, great, uh, Craig Rochelle, sorry if you're watching Craig, hopefully you are watching. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but he said, talked about the importance of connection. A lot of people like isolation and I would say with these two, mm-hmm. but there's different forms of isolation, right? Isolation, some people don't want anybody around them mm-hmm. and others they need to be by themselves just to be by themselves, right? But they still have that connection with people in that community. Mm-hmm. What she was describing, the, the the young lady that was on his podcast was she was so envious of this um 
this family or community. She didn't say community, but I said she's describing community mm -hmm. in um one of those African countries. I forgot. I don't want to make up a name and it's wrong, but mm -hmm. she was just saying, I love how they do everything together. They're cooking together. They're um, playing together. They're sitting out having conversation. And, and while I'm watching, I said, she's describing community. Mm -hmm. And we've always had community. Yes. First as a family. Mm -hmm. Going into this new year, and even reflecting from this year, all of the things we've done as a community, the importance of connection. So we speak about me in the social life production. I'm a connector. Mm -hmm. I'm a relationship builder. I'm a bridge builder. Yeah. I'm a light. Mm -hmm. I've been called to lead and help leaders, help to change mindsets and perspectives, including mine. So sometimes when I'm talking, I don't talk like I'm standing here and you there. I'm like, I'm getting, I'm getting it poured back. Mm -hmm. And it starts with my family, right? So the importance of connection. Do y'all want to touch on that real quick or did, did, did I cover it? I'm just kind of going to speed this up to cover key things that people need, key tools. Because we're not meant to do this life alone. No, no. I think you're um, absolutely right. There are certain people like Frankie and I, we have to withdraw from the community for a moment. Not necessarily the connections, but the community because for me I need to withdraw and recharge mm -hmm. I need that I need mm -hmm. to just be still and just be because so much of my life is is, is all over the mm -hmm. place you know and um, we were built for community we were built for community mm -hmm. that is in our human DNA mm -hmm. and another word for community would be covenant I believe we were built, we are in a covenant relationship because there are certain things that we agree on. There are certain things that we move together <laughs> on. Like even when we decided to do sleepovers, even as grown mm -hmm. women, we sleepovers. covenant takes it to another level where I'm not going to dishonor these ladies when they're not in my presence mm -hmm. because we have a community and a covenant with each that other to protect good. each other, to be there for each other, to be transparent. And it's almost like being in a covenant with your husband. That's a different type of covenant. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to break my covenant with these ladies. Mm -hmm. I'm just not. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we were built for community. It's, yeah. it's, it's needed. As much as you feel like, I, I don't need nobody. I, I, I'm a rider that I do all by myself. I got that. But you need somebody there to be able to just. You go, you gonna need somebody. Mm -hmm. You gonna need some encouragement one time. You mm -hmm. gonna need somebody to just just really have your back. Like for me, I feel like I'm on a battlefield that's called life, mm. and these are my fellow generals with me. I don't got time for to be worrying about you. You got your position. I know she got her position. I know she got her position. I know Tanya's got got her position. We are solid in our position. When we come together, it's powerful. It's a force. It's, it's a force. So, yeah. Of course. Yep. And you, you touched on a lot of points mm -hmm. in reference to the connection, mm -hmm. needing other people, trusting the rest. So even me, I know, you know, I'm an extrovert. I, I, I like people. I like the crowd. But oftentimes I like to be by myself. So mm -hmm. if I'm going out to eat or if I'm in the house or I'm going to the spot, even the most and, and maybe not. Let me not speak for everybody. I know but for me, I need to recharge. Mm -hmm. I may not do it as much as they do as it relates to the solitude, but I definitely go to that place of solitude to recharge. Shifting, pivoting, seasons. Um, there are seasons within your faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I, mm, I don't even know why I'm thinking of my, of my pastor, um, Bishop Claude R. Alexander Jr. Shout out to another rock mm -hmm. that helped all right, back to the emotion. Mm -hmm. Champion <laughs> is the word that comes to my champion. mind when I think about him. He is a champion. 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 Our Woo! champion. Girl. Yeah. Mm. yeah champion. When I say mama loves her some bishop. <laughs> <laughs> no, we all do. I know, I know. But mama sometimes be like, mama, can you please stop emailing? Oh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> can you stop emailing pastor? I promise you, he's not reading it. His assistant is. <laughs> no, but he did read it. At her funeral, Pastor read those emails. We that's the only I didn't cry at the service. Not that I was trying to be hard. I just it was a celebration. It was. Pastor did that. It was. I was like, yo, mama, <laughs> she was right. <laughs> he actually did value her, her her messages. So one, I just want to publicly thank God for one of many connections 
that has helped empowered my whole family. Mm -hmm. Gito wasn't isn't even a member, never was a member of the park, but she's benefited from it. But just what and who God puts in your life mm -hmm. to build up your faith. The community. Who, yeah, the community. And we didn't even necessarily talk every day or all of that, but it's what you empowered. I don't know if anybody wants to touch on that before I, I move on, but when I talk about seasons, I just thought of him because he's in a season now where y'all got it. I'm about to go rest. <laughs> so we can go on and on, literally. <laughs> but we cannot make this five hours like we did our dinner a couple of weeks ago, right? But that's how, how it is. We just start getting the flow. And literally, I mean, we, we act really extremely silly, too. But this wasn't the time to act too silly. We get a little bit. But y'all uh, do. I don't. Even kill. Solid. Stoic. You see, Stoic. See how people like to <laughs> uh, uh, abuse the word? Yeah, yes, she does act silly. She tried to act like she's so mature. It's not mature, okay, it's mature. All right, focus. <laughs> anyway, follow, follow, please. Uh, follow, follow. Uh, follow! <laughs> <laughs> See? Yes. You, heard you can't that. say you because heard I said that. she's a person of power, so she said follow. Right, okay. okay. Anyway. <laughs> No, seriously, this has been great. Conversation will always continue as it, it as it always does, but I'm just thankful that we could we we were able to give a little piece of what we do literally behind the scenes. And when you speak about connections and your tribe and all this stuff that people ha um, talk about, make sure you're sitting with people, especially going into the new season, that will uplift, that you can trust, that you're not just talking about just regular things, but you're talking about faith. Last, a couple of weeks ago when we, when we met, we weren't just talking about faith. We were tripping out. Mm -hmm. We were talking about strategy. We were talking about business. We were talking about next level. We were talking about being consistent, showing up for each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just find your tribe that can truly help you get to the next level or sustain you at the level that you are, um, are at. So to wrap this up, what a year. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And when I say that, hopefully you know what I mean. What a year. That means this year has been filled with so much. So as we as we have gone through this year and we're getting ready for, for next year, what is your takeaway as far as this year with the message of what a year? So what a year personally to you, what is your takeaway and how are you moving into 2024? What a year. What a year for me is... Um, God has entrusted me with more. Mm -hmm. And um, that more expand outside of my household. Of course, my husband and I have been over the ministry going on five years now. But he had also entrusted me in the workplace as well. So what a year is creating balance. Mm. balance. Creating balance, but still moving in purpose. Mm. And not being distracted. So... How, what's creating balance? Not to prolong too long. Creating but. balance because I have a lot of um, things that I juggle. Mm -hmm. You know, being a wife, being a mother of three active boys mm -hmm. who are in sports, having a church that's almost an hour away, and then working almost an hour away, mm -hmm. and then also still trying to stay connected to my village. So creating balance Got is you. just because of all the different roles that I mm -hmm. have. But I have purpose within all those roles mm -hmm. and being able to how you say the word compartmentalize. I know, right? That's just, that's just Compart me. Compartmentalize. Get it right. Compartmentalize. Compartmentalize. So, yes, I don't know why that word is Exactly. So and, and just being present wherever my feet mm -hmm. is and mm -hmm. truly being present mm -hmm. and not robbing each of those roles of my presence. So, yeah. I don't know if it was T.D. Jakes or uh, Dr. Darius Daniels, but when you speak about balance, because sometimes I think about like, man, how? But some days, some weeks, you may give 100% to your husband. Mm -hmm. Other time, you may give 20% and different. Like, it's allocated differently depending on the day, the need, the time. But you don't want to keep neglecting the same thing. The, yeah, so, yeah. It's, that's the thing. Yeah, it's, yeah. That's, to me, that's what balance is. Is, okay, this week, we going to do date night. We didn't mean I do date night for another that, month. That, but that's <laughs> it. You know that's saying? it. It's but creating it's a system. Like, yeah, yeah. And then pivoting because I don't know. I can't come, y'all, because mm -hmm. my husband needs me. 100% mm -hmm. going mm -hmm. here. So, mm -hmm. good. So, what a year, Frankie. Yes. What a year is different for me because I gave the year a C because mm -hmm. of the 
even keel. Um, he, he, so I know, I feel that something is about to happen. So I'm just, and I, and I don't even know what that means, but I just feel like something's about to happen. Um, so he just has me in this space where he's just like, just chill out. Don't try to do too much because I'm trying to trying to make it make sense and step by because you know I'm a step by step process. person, mm -hmm. process person. Mm -hmm. So he just has me right here, right now, and just and working on that patience, working on not being anxious and starting to think too far ahead, which I have a tendency to do. So that's mm -hmm. that's that's going back, circling back. That's why I gave this year a seat because he has me in this space where I need to just, just kind of chill out mm -hmm. and do what, and, 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 and trust how he always works with me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that even answers. No, it makes that. sense. Mm -hmm. um, Cause that's your year. What a year. So you're reflecting upon what this year is and how you're walking into next mm -hmm. year. And as you were talking, I just thought about um, somebody that's getting ready to go on stage, but you're behind the curtain or behind the door and you're just sitting there waiting. Mm -hmm. And let's say there's a delay. You don't know what's going on, but you know they haven't opened the door for you to go yet. So you're waiting. You know you can't get out of position because it's about time to go on stage. You just don't know what. So you're waiting. I see it. And I know that the curtain is about to open. But it's someone said, I'm always quoting what somebody else said, but somebody said it It gets the worst when you're almost there. And not saying that's this year has been like horrible mm -hmm. like that, but mm -hmm. the worst as it relates to patience, mm -hmm. maybe. Mm -hmm. Or feeling like blah, like, okay, you mm -hmm. know what's going on, mm -hmm. but I see you behind the curtain. And you know, getting the lights ready and that curtain is about to open. Not just for you, but you and your husband. I'm not gonna call his name, but you and my my amazing brother-in-law. Mm -hmm. Woo! It's kind of amazing. I wish he loved the camera. <laughs> if my brother-in-law, this year I'm praying. Cause when I get, when, speaking mm -hmm. into existence, mm -hmm. Actually, I need to get Clay one on. I don't know if I've gotten Clay. I'm going to get both Clay and my brother in law in this dining room. Mark my words. <laughs> Mark it. <laughs> this year, B, plus, if I wasn't in the right faith perspective, it probably would be a D mm -hmm. because things would have taken me under because it took more strength, another level of faith, another level of effort. So never think that, oh man, as if. Your, your faith isn't worthy because the more you climb, the harder it gets, the more it requires. But I passed several tests. Mm, 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 mm. Several tests. The biggest test is believing what God said about me. Mm, mm. The biggest test was seeing beyond what I could see. The biggest test is knowing that I'm walking in purpose and power and to believe it. The biggest test is knowing that before you get any award, any accolade, any uplifting, you better walk in it as if you have all of the applause, all of the Grammys or whatever awards there are. Because it's not about the awards. Mm -hmm. It's about him. Mm -hmm. What did he say? All this other external stuff is great, but if you're not hitting the mark, it means nothing. What a year. This year is the setup to something major that's coming in 2024. Mm -hmm. And that's not just for me. Mm -hmm. That's for everyone who's being obedient enough to the call to move forward. So for my year, for my B+, plus, for everyone who is walking into the new year, walk into it in faith, mm -hmm. regardless of where it is. If you're not there yet, faith it until you make it. Keep the right perspective. This year is going to be amazing if you let it. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. The goal, the target is fulfillment. And that only happens through walking in God's purpose and vision for your life. Those that are waiting for marriage, for kids, for whatever, stay focused on the vision. But I thank everyone who is continuing to support a social light production and those that have and those that maybe ran across the channel and, and, and shared it. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. because this is not about me. As I always say, this is about what God wants to do <laughs> through me for you guys. This is the opportunity to have amazing people who happen to be my family on to help 
share the gospel, essentially. Mm -hmm. So we thank you, ladies. Thank you for being on. Thank you for helping to usher all of us into the new year. And I feel like we need to end in a prayer. Are there any last words before we close out in prayer? I agree with you. 2024 is going to be a move like we've never seen before. If those who are called to obedience will obey. Mm. Mm. It's good. Yeah. You good. It out. All right. Mm -hmm. So we're going to close out in prayer. Frankie, by chance, do you feel led or do you want me to close? Um, oh, I'll pray. Okay. God, we just thank you. We just praise you. We just glorify you. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We glorify you. Mm -hmm. We thank you for your strength. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your consistency. We thank you for just always being there, even mm -hmm. when we feel that you are not. Mm -hmm. Even when we pull away, we thank you. We thank you for everything, Jesus. We thank you for thank internally. You externally we thank you for <clears throat> physically what you give us our jobs our husbands our homes we thank you for internally what you give us our peace mm -hmm. our strength mm -hmm. um our health we thank mm -hmm. you for everything everything that we take for granted mm -hmm. on a day-to-day -day basis we thank you mm -hmm. <clears throat> lord you are awesome mm -hmm. you are wonderful you are mighty. Mm. You are so patient with us. We love you. Mm -hmm. We praise you. We thank you for this conversation, God. We mm -hmm. pray that it makes sense or helps or pushes or nudges mm -hmm. or encourages someone, God. Something that you led us to say. We hope that it just touches and lands on someone listening, yes, God. Mm -hmm. We thank you for this day. Mm -hmm. We thank you for getting us through this day. We thank you for your protection. And Lord, we just give you all the glory. We yes. give you all the honor. We give you all the praise. In your most precious and holy name, I pray. Amen. 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 Well, thank you guys for joining a socialite production where we are what? Connecting the world through what? Days. Culture and entertainment. <laughs> she, always, she always she always falls for it. Always, she's solid until <laughs> I, I know how to I know how to break through break through. Always. So, but no, thank you guys, and we will see you next year. Mm -hmm.